I'm Michael Feinstein, and this is In the Archives from the Archives of the Great American Songbook Foundation. Music, music, music. That's what we're about. And to preserve the Great American Songbook music is particularly important and fun and exciting, especially as we go through collections and find arrangements and information about the performers whose work we represent that gives us a broader picture of their work and gives us the opportunity to present it once again to the world. And many of the donors who have gifted us with these collections have entrusted their collections to us because they understand that it is very important to us to keep these arrangements not only alive, but well-preserved, well-archived um, in that there are sometimes institutions that have collections, that have taken collections, and they are left in a basement or they are not processed. And the word processing when it comes to collections is very important because if you have a collection, let's say the Andy Williams music, of which we have 150 boxes of music, if that is not processed or cataloged, you can't find anything in the collection. And these collections come to us in various states, sometimes very well organized with a spreadsheet or an inventory. Uh, sometimes there's a rough inventory. Sometimes it's a road case where the music was last used when someone was performing it out in the hinterlands and comes to us in a completely disorganized state. And it is up to us to organize and make the music accessible because we have a policy here that if somebody wants to find something, we'll find it. Even if the collection is not processed, we will do our best to put our hands on something. So at least we have a rough inventory or list of what we have in the hopes of finding something if somebody needs it. And so uh, these are examples of a few of the collections that we have here at the foundation. This uh, conflagration of music right here comes from the estate of another important singer of the Great American Songbook, Kay Starr. Kay was a magnificent singer and a great human being whom I got to know later in her life and was a woman who had this fascinating career in that she started originally singing blues in Dixieland and appeared with the Joe Venuti Orchestra for several years and then Capitol Records signed her and turned her into a pop star. So you can see when looking at arrangements, the different eras and phases of one's performing career, where they're singing jazz or Dixieland music and then they sign with a record label and all of a sudden there are larger orchestrations for a big orchestra and their pop tunes arranged in a pop style. In other words, a style that would be the uh, uh, prevailing musical style of a particular era. If it's a shuffle beat or if it's a rock beat or this or that, they're commercial arrangements created for the purpose of selling records. And so sometimes a performer, if they had a hit song, and in Kay's case it was the song Wheel of Fortune, which was one of her biggest hits, she had the record arrangement and then she would have an arrangement that she performed on the road in nightclubs, and then as she sang the song over and over again in every single one of her acts, there would be new iterations of the song where they would do different arrangements, where they would change the key or do it in a different musical style for the purpose of freshening, freshening it up for herself and for her audiences. So we will often find many different versions of a particular arrangement uh, and, uh, or of a particular song, I should say, different arrangements. And so sometimes we are stuck with a head-scratching problem of finding a whole bunch of parts for a song and we discover that they are not the same arrangement. So you have to spend hours putting these parts here and these parts here and trying finding and separating the different versions of arrangements of a particular song. But in the case of Kay's library, she happily had these arrangements already um, collated. For example, this is My Heart Reminds Me, and then underneath it says number one, unknown in C, parts only. So this is an arrangement. We don't know who did it, but we know it's in the key of C, and she only has the parts. She doesn't have the full score. 
Then there's a version number two, F. Ortega, which is Frank Ortega, who was her uh, conductor later, Master Rhythm. Then Scorn Parts, Strings Only, Scorn Parts, Pete King arrangement. So this shows the different phases she went through in, in singing this song. This is another example of that. This says, Never Dreamed. It says, Ernie Freeman, Capital 62265, Scorn Parts. So that's the arrangement that she recorded for Capitol Records, and you can you can find and listen to that record. And then underneath it says, unknown arrangement with quartet parts only. So that was probably something that she sang in a nightclub uh, with just a quartet, with just four musicians instead of the big orchestration uh, that she did for Capitol Records. So that's part of the fun of going through this music, finding the different iterations and, and seeing if we can trace them to recordings or find live recordings in order to hear what they were supposed to sound like. Because sometimes there are uh, arrangements that don't have the vocal parts, and we don't know what the vocal part is, and the only way that you can reconstruct an arrangement is if you hear a recording of it when there are parts of it missing. One of the other libraries that we are very happy to have is the legacy of Ralph Carmichael, who is a mighty composer, arranger, and conductor who had a very interesting dual career because he wrote a great deal of sacred music and his sacred uh, oratorios and such are uh, often performed. He was associated with Billy Graham for many years and did uh, beautiful arrangements of hymns, including an album recorded by Rosemary Clooney with Ralph Carmichael called Hymns from the Heart in 1963 for MGM Records. Uh, we are lucky to have all of Ralph Carmichael's arrangements of American popular songs. And he worked extensively at Capitol Records while he was under contract, along with Nelson Riddle and Billy May and other arrangers. And so Ralph worked a lot with many of the giants of that time, especially the artists at Capitol Records. And then he performed with his orchestra from place to place and also made instrumental recordings of popular songs under his own name for Capitol. So we have a number of Ralph's instrumental arrangements of standards. For example, this is A String of Pearls, which was a big band hit back in the day. And here is Ralph's arrangement, which is a swing version, which we could hand out to a big band and play at a, a party or a wedding, and you would get everybody on the dance floor moving to this one, folks. So I suddenly feel like I'm uh, on HSN. You'll love this one, folks. Call right now, $9.99. It can be yours. Uh, no, it can't be yours. Uh, but you can come and see it, and you can hear it played sometime here. A String of Pearls, another um, swing arrangement by Ralph. Gershwin song, I'll build, a, I'll build a Stairway to Paradise. We can never have too much Gershwin in our collection. And uh, this is Ralph's full score. This is a big band score. And looking in here, it tells us that it's, it was done for Pat Boone, Easter Seals, 1992. So this was probably done for a television show. And I'm trying to figure out if this was a vocal chart or an instrumental chart. And I'll look at it later, and I'll tell you some other time, because I don't want to have you wait in suspense while I figure it out. Ralph Carmichael did a lot of work for television. He was so in demand. And this is an arrangement of the very famous classic song, Laura, that he did for the Oscars, the Academy Awards, in 2009. That's what's in this envelope. And this is an instrumental version of the song Unforgettable, which was unforgettably sung by Nat King Cole. And uh, Ralph worked with Nat Cole. And I'm sure that this is his beautiful instrumental homage to his memories of working with Nat. So these are just a few of the items we have here in the music collection at the Great American Songbook Foundation, and I hope that you'll come back and join me again soon for more. I'm Michael Feinstein. <laughs>